ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies, we got a little bit of Joe Desi in our background. It's going to be a little light, going to be a little heavy, be just a little light. Ladies and gentlemen, I just need to talk to you. Um, you know what I realized? And I just need you guys to understand this because I knew it. It was right there, just like when I show it to you, you all are going to say you knew it too. Watch this. First of all, hold on. Zip codes? Zip codes are not required with reference to private property, ladies and gentlemen. Zip codes are only required for federal zones. Hold on. I want you to pay attention to this right here. I certify or declare under penalty of perjury of the laws of the state of California. Ladies and gentlemen, stop declaring anything under penalty of perjury. You need to put a caveat in there letting them know that you have the right to practice your religion. See, my God does not allow me to submit to anybody else's authority but his. Now, he does say that I am to be in submission to the superior authorities only with reference to their mandate from him, the trust agreement. Okay, you don't believe me? Go back, look at Romans, the 16th chapter. It is not a matter of whether or not you agree with me, whether or not you understand. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I need you to get. I, I got to correct this because this I forgot to correct that. This is a, a firm, attested, and ascribed. So that's what that's supposed to be. But I want you to know that when you submit to a statute, that's interfering with me. It's interfering with my right to practice my religion as I choose. I'm not bowing to nobody. You guys do know that that's what the word submit means, right? To bow. To concede. To become a slave of. Don't take my word for it. Go back, look it up. Okay? That's why the courts have a tendency to put that word on everything. Because they need you to submit to their jurisdiction. So, let's do it again, y'all. Staple singles in my background. All right. This is for a vehicle. I mentioned that this vehicle is not for commercial use, for profit and or gain, but is for household, consumer good use, as defined by the Uniform Commercial Code, Article 9, Section 102. That's my prima facie evidence. Is exempt from excise taxes people that's what that excise word means okay is exempt from excise then I say see the right to property clause the right to the enjoyment of life clause of the Constitution uh, hold on S E C U R I T Y P R O V I S I O N S of the Constitution. Yeah, because this is a secured right, ladies and gentlemen. So we might as well highlight the security of that right. We're dealing with securities all the time, y'all. And your constitutional rights, you don't have any. You do have secured rights. Get the difference. Understand. Understand. Know the difference between a constitutional right and an inalienable right. Your inalienable rights are secured rights. Nobody can take that away. You don't need a document, a piece of paper to identify those rights. Those rights are yours. You don't have to ask nobody permission to exercise those rights. For instance, I have the right to own property. So if I own the property, I don't need a zip code. The Postal Service is an administrative agency. Okay, look at their postal code. They do not require a zip code. Zip codes are not mandatory. They are suggestive. Okay, sorry, don't take my word for it. Go do your research, people. All you got to do is type in Google, two cent stamp. That's it, two cent stamp. Okay, and then go from there. All right, or no, better yet, type in tax park Q, P-A-R, 
C U E, I believe. No, Parkew should be Q, but I believe it is C U E. Okay, not gonna go there, not not gonna do there. This is what I wrote. I do not submit under pen, perjury a statute as this would interfere with my due process right to practice my religion as I choose, as Jehovah has commanded that I submit to the jurisdiction of the true God Jehovah only. Deuteronomy 4, 6, Exodus 10, 26. There is a lot more, but I'm just giving them two. I do hereby declare that the aforementioned is wholly accurate, and such is based on first-hand knowledge and or information witnessed by and before the true God Jehovah, in exercising my right to practice my religion as applied to. Nope. Uh-uh. It's not as applied to. Is as I C H O O S E. As I choose. I declare I R M T T E S T and now I know some of you guys you don't believe in Jehovah now just because you don't believe in him doesn't mean that he doesn't exist I know I know you want to wish him away as if you could just tap your, your heels and say take me back take me back take me back yeah right ladies and gentlemen you can reword this however you want for your junk okay as such is stated under penalty of Jehovah's divine retribution on this day so help me Jehovah God if otherwise you see he's the God that I fear so why would I not do everything in his name under his name as one of Jehovah's witnesses you keep hearing me say that that is my God that's the one I trust in and he told me his eyes are roving about the earth looking for those whose hearts are complete towards them, towards him, so that he can show them his strength. So I'm going to let him show his strength in reference to me. Ladies and gentlemen, they have put me in the iron furnace, so to speak, several times. And like Daniel, I've come out unscathed. Well, technically, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego or Ananias, Azariah, Ananias, Azariah, and Abednego, okay? Those young men came out of that so-called furnace unscathed because they trusted. I'm going to trust him. Because I've been noticing that these documents are asking people to do so under the penalty of perjury. Why do you got to be under it? Why can't you be in line with it? Why can't you be in line with the law if it was really a law? Ladies and gentlemen, because you are submitting these documents, you're submitting to their jurisdiction. The documents even say you're submitting. Okay? The documents even suggest that you are submitting to the court. That you declare under penalty of perjury. Why do you want to be under something? To be under something means that someone is over you and controlling you. Why would you let a statute control you? Well, you let the Bible control you, well, because that's God's word. Of course, I'm going to let that control me, but I ain't going to let no statute control me. Y'all, give me a second for a second. I'll be right back. I got to go take care of somebody. To many of you, this won't make any sense. To some of you, you think it is too technical. Ladies and gentlemen, then you don't understand the courts. The courts operate on a presumption. And remember, it's all about submitting to a jurisdiction. So when I started thinking about the penalty of perjury, because you know everybody's been hearing me talk about how offensive that is to me, to submit under the penalty of perjury. Perjury is a statute, ladies and gentlemen. Type in Google, penalty of perjury statute. And you'll see the statute is actually called penalty of perjury. Well, why can't it just be, if you lie, you lie, and there's a consequence for lying. Because equity won't stomach a lie. You follow me?
All right, ladies and gentlemen, 10 minutes. Got to go. Y'all take care of yourselves. Just wanted to talk to you guys about being under penalties, okay? Got to go. Adios. There's a flag on the plate. That's, that's a flag. Can you?